What's happening, everybody? Hey, we are finally back. Time for another episode of Selling Past Your Expiration Date. Being thrifty over 50. I'm Jay, and as always with me, my mom. Hi, I'm Peg, everybody. Hi out there. Glad to be back. Sheesh. Crazy. I know. Vacations, Thanks. Super Bowls, you know, things, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and I know Olympics, but I, are we on a break right now? Do we time this right? Yeah, I don't know. I got to tell you, though, for those of you who watch the Olympics, if you have Apple TV, uh, I want to tell you a little secret you might not know. NBC Sports has a specific app for, hey, NBC Sports. And that's how I watch the Super Bowl. And that's how I've been watching some of the Olympics. So when something amazing happens, if you pop over to the NBC Sports app on your Apple TV, like the gold medal run yesterday on snowboard for the kid from Cleveland, they just showed that run. So you can yeah. watch full events, you can watch it live, or you can watch like medal winning performances. So if you if you have Apple TV and you're watching the Olympics and you have not downloaded the NBC Sports app, go do that. You will thank me later. Yeah, we're, uh, we're kind of excited here in Cleveland, Ohio, because the kid that won the USA first gold medal uh, is from Rocky River, Ohio, which is about 35 miles away from where mom lives. And of course, uh, all over the news, they're showing, showing all the bars and everybody, you know, rooting him on. And then he wins the gold. So kind of exciting for our our, uh, our area. So we, we're, yeah, we're, I can. yeah, we're darn sure. And, you know, mom with her sports, the Cavs have a whole new team. <laughs> This past week, we traded yeah, away do. six old timers, brought in four youngins, and uh, we beat the Boston Celtics pretty good today. And uh, so we have one now three in a row. So I think we're back. I hope, anyways. <laughs> so Sherry said she liked my shirt. This is my one, my one and only pink Hawaiian shirt. So obviously, it's coming up on uh, St. Patty's Day. Obviously, it's coming up on Valentine's Day. St. Patty's Day is next. <laughs> I, know, uh, I wasn't sure what to wear today, Valentine's or, or Mardi Gras. We got both right together this time. And this shirt did not fit me just a little while ago, so it's back uh, to fit me. I know. That's exciting. That is exciting. I had a uh, Mardi Gras party here Saturday, or Friday with my card girls, and uh, Mom brought home the King Cake mix and the Hurricane mix and the Beignet mix and Jambalaya mix, and I made this great Mardi Gras feast for all the girls. I made my hurricane not bad. It was pretty close to what we had at Pat O'Brien's. I must say, I did the cherries with the orange slices, so it was a fun day. So I'm still I'm still reeling on New Orleans. <laughs> I just love that city. <laughs> it was a lot of fun, although too cold. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. It was, and uh, and I know you pay, people are probably tired of hearing about uh, the cruise and the secret beach and all of that good stuff, but we did have a really good time, and I hope uh, many more of you can make it uh, next year for the number two. Heck yeah. So yeah. before we dive into our subject today, mm -hmm. uh, I, I just did a you know I did a little live uh, promo of this show uh, an hour ago, and uh, oh Cheryl wants to know if I got new ink. Yeah, I haven't shown my pictures of my new ink yet. But I'll show that in a quick second. Okay. But the one thing I've been noticing in the thrifting board, um, a little bit in the secret beach, and a few other places is uh, people saying their their sales are off and down and soft, and mine aren't. And so what am I doing that you're not? You know, every show that I do on YouTube, everything that I ever pop in the thrifting board and definitely all the webinars and content that is in the secret beach. If you follow, if you follow that along, you should be doing at the minimum what I'm doing, because I tell you everything I do. Then we, we have guests uh, on every show we have give you their tips and tricks. And mom gives you her, her uh, main scores here. This week alone, uh, as of right now, I've done 1,300 in sales. Now, I'm not the biggest eBay seller, but I'm busy doing all this stuff. So if I can knock out $1,300 this week, uh, you know, and I, 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 mine's not down. Mine, mine's not soft. Mine's doing uh, just fine. So uh, if, you're, if you're not up to par, it's time to revisit what you're selling, how you're selling it, what you're doing to promote it, and really just follow the thrifting board best practices and, and get involved in the social media share threads. And, you know, if you've not seen all the YouTube shows I've done, go back and watch them because yeah. although it's, it's fun doing these, it's, it's 
they're all chock full of great content. So uh, yeah, make sure. sure that, you know, uh, and, and I got to say, my, I've lost a few members of the Seeker Beach who said they can't afford it right now. Well, that tells me they're not putting what they've learned in the Seeker Beach into practice because those who can't afford it, what they learn from one webinar usually ends up paying for the entire year. Right. And they get two webinars a month, me and a guest, and then bonus YouTube shows. So at the minimum, there's like 36 webinars a year. And yeah, they're not going out and searching for what you guys are talking no, about. No? They're, they're, yeah. they're not applying. And uh, you, you've got to apply what, what I'm putting out there to you, what my mom's putting out there to you, what the guests are putting out there to you in the Seeker Beach. I mean, and just all day long, you know, look at the haul thread in the thrifting board. Look at the social media share thread. Look at the bolos that get posted. All day long, there's just so much great content of things you should be out hustling for. Like, you know, I, I wasn't, uh, tins were not on my radar until my friend Kim's like, I sell tins all the time. So if you saw the haul last week, I bought some tins. I haven't listed them yet, but I will because I bought some more tins this week. So yeah. you, what I feel and what I fear is people watch these shows. They pay for the secret beach and they just stay in the lane they've been in the whole time. They're enjoying the content, but they're not putting it into practice. I, they're not I putting it to work. Yep. Now you have to do it, guys. I mean, we love doing the shows, but you have to take what we give you and, and put it to use because otherwise you will stay right where you're at. Heck yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. uh, it, it, it. and I also, when, when people say their stuff's down, I go, look, a lot of times I see that they're selling like it's 2008 still, not 2018. Right. And right. It, it's, it's a combo of how their listings look, the, the products they're selling, uh, the, you know, the, the, the pictures, you've got to stay up with the times. Uh, and, uh, you know, I use my mom and dad as an example. If they can do it and keep up with it, you guys can too. So what'd you do? Uh, what'd you do for sales in January, Ma? Oh, January. Let me let me look real, real quick. Oh, oh, we did good. We had good sales. We were over two thousand profit. Two thousand profit. So profit. if you're not doing two thousand profit, my mom and dad, seventy five, retired three days a week. They watch their granddaughters. Mom's got her cards. Dad's got his boys. If they can do it, you can do it too. So you know, that's what I want people to focus on. I, I didn't didn't plan to start the show to get a soapbox, but I see so many people saying they're they're not selling well. They're not making money. But I'm not. I'm not seeing them applying all the stuff they've learned. I really right. am not. So, and you, you got to do that. I mean, that's that's important. I I just you know posted what I posted. But last week, I think I posted that I finally hit 700 items in my store. Woo! And uh, and as of today, I'm at 770. So I've been barreling, yeah, see, man. <laughs> I, I cleaned out a lot of old crap. So as of this moment, you are crushing me. I currently have. 657 and and you know i got 657 on ebay i got about 500 on amazon so i'm amazon. usually around 11 to 1300 items and that's yeah. and that's given me at a minimum four thousand a month in sales right right so you know i'm i'm, I'm pushing hard i want to hit that thousand mark this year I, I i mean i should be able to i would think you know but uh it, one thing one thing is i'm not outsourcing as much because of our weather of course and uh so consequently i've been working on my death piles which really needed to be caught up and i have really started to dwindle it down. I, I'd like to try and get it almost gone before we start hitting uh, all the flea markets and garage sales again. You know, I've only got a month and a half left before uh, the snow hopefully is gone. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be doing a thrift haul in the next couple of days. I haven't scheduled it yet, but uh, Deb, our good friend Debbie Weeder is going to be doing color commentary with me. Right. Super. And uh, I hit a couple of thrift stores in the last three days. And plus, I forgot to show. Well, last week's thrift haul, one of the things I put in the title of the thrift haul, I forgot to show. Oh, so I'll okay. be showing that this week. Okay. And I forgot I had sourced in New Orleans on the last day. So I got some of those things right. to show. And uh, so what I implore everyone to do is to tune into the thrift haul. It'll probably be like Tuesday. And look at the stuff I'm showing you. If those things are not on your radar or if those are the things you're not purchasing, look at them, study them, and go out and find some. Right. I no, I know. I mean, you have, you have to do that. And I, I, uh, I, I took that uh, advice, Jason, that you were talking about. So when we get into mom's hall, I'll show you uh, what mom did. Cool. And there. um, I bought two products this weekend, uh, one for 20 and one for 80. And those two combined will be $600 in sales. Nice. And so again, one of them was way off my radar. I happened to stumble across it. And luckily my new assistant who was with me knew what it was. And with what she was telling me, I was able to do my research. 
Wow. Uh, and the other one uh, will be my thrift story for this week on th my thrift tip for this week on thrifty business. So, uh, you know, the products are out there. And I know some of you live in remote corners. I do live in a city that, you know, people come in and out of all day long. I get that. But, you know, if you're not outsourcing on a regular basis, you can't find it. And if you're not getting your stuff listed, you can't sell. And if you're not paying attention to what we're all teaching you to list and sell, you're not selling the right stuff. Right. Right, because you have to stay up with the times, just like you said, because the, the trends change. That's for sure. We've learned That's that. For sure. So speaking of, what, what a great segue. Like you thought we planned this out. Speaking of changing. Yeah. Okay, can you, now? you know, all good, all good things must come to an end. Unfortunately, oh. the cheap oh. run of smart, FedEx Smart Post has come to an end. Oh, man. My, I mean, mom and dad, of course, our crush, needless to say. I mean, you, a lot of you know that. We are sellers of large items, and uh, I am just beside myself. And you know, I'm going to try and make the best of it. I did go in and change, um, you know, my my pricing on my shipping on, on all of the big items that we have. And uh, oh, <laughs> why did they do that to us? I'm so sad. Every year in January, prices change. I know. And usually, it's easy to uh, uh, um, uh, boy, what's the word I'm looking for? Adjust, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, no, not dissolve. Oh, god, uh, god, get, get old sucks. Uh, anyway, <laughs> usually, usually, you can roll along and it's just easy because it's not oh, too big of a deal. But, but FedEx Smart Post, oh, before we go on, people want to see my new ink. Hold on, oh, okay, okay, show us. Bam, oh my. <laughs> What my son needs is more is needs is more tattoos. <laughs> yeah, so uh, pirate ship sitting on a skull, uh, skull and crossbones, uh, no color yet. This was by far the worst tattoo I've ever received. The pain was insanely crazy, but oddly enough, it is the easiest one has ever healed on my body. There's been zero the pain. Uh, is that the last one? I hope. No, heck no. We got to go back in color and then fill oh. the rest of the arm in, and then oh. I'm getting the secret beach coma right here. Mom got one. That's it. I'll never do it again. <laughs> oh, thanks, everybody. <laughs> absorb. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. I just absorb, absorb it. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. Y'all read my mind. Thank you. Uh, well, hey, Chris, Chris has a good question. Why does one hurt more than another? Well, it just depends on where it's at on your body. So yeah. different parts of your body. So when I did my treasure chest, uh, my treasure, and mm -hmm. the puffer, and the shark, they were all done on the same day. And uh, he la he laid them all out, and he said, "I'm going to do the treasure chest last." And I said, "Why?" Uh, and he said, uh, "Because if I do the treasure chest first, you'll leave." And I said, "Oh, okay. Could it really be that bad?" So he did the puffer fish. He did the shark. The second he started the treasure chest on my wrist, I was like, oh, "I hate you." And that's how I felt for this whole tattoo. It was horrible being in the little soft tissue underneath your arm. Oh, that's got to be tender under there. I'm just thinking of getting pinched under there, let alone tattooed. Ay, 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 ay. All right. So tell us about FedEx Smart Post. All right. Well, you know, guys, um, basically we're using FedEx Smart Post for our larger, larger, heavier items because it was so much cheaper. And uh, gosh, we were using it for all kinds of things, you know, from our water skis to polo mallets to large toy chest boxes and so on, and uh, saving a lot of money. And of course, you know, the customer likes that. So now we're going to have to adjust. Um, most of you know that um, this is the 2018, and they see that FedEx Smart Post uh, chart or uh, rate chart. But, you know, this is your guideline that you have to go by. So what I'm going to go over with you guys is how to calculate dimensional weight. This is the new way that we have to do it. Um, we're going to start with uh, an item that, say, is weighing five pounds. So on my chart, I will go look at five pounds and my furthest zone away, which for me is California, and see how much that would normally cost me. So a five-pound package normally would have cost me $12.82. But now we have to take that five pounds and use this formula. And I know you've seen it being posted, but let's go over it slowly. You will get, find out what the size of your box is. I'm using a box that is going to be measuring 12 by 10 by 12. So here's what you do. 12 
12 okay, by, back. 12 by 10 by 12. Okay. So what you will do is you, you uh, multiply 12 times 10, which is 120, and then take the 120 times 12, which equals 1,440. You then take that number and divide it by 139. That's what you have to do. And then that's just the, figuring it out. That's the way the rule goes. It now comes up to 10.3 pounds. So your five pound package. So that's is dimensional pounds. weight, not actual weight. And that's how things mostly operate when you go bigger. FedEx Smart Post didn't. Right. But that's the change. So, so now you're at a dimensional weight, which is now 10.3 pounds. So instead of costing me 1282, the package will now cost me 2282. Is so, the, is the speaking spell talking to you? Yeah, we have this Heinz 57 clock that talks every now and then. Oh, what? I thought it was the speaking uh, spell. <laughs> uh, in fact, I should bring that out to show that today. Um, so, so I went back to check five pounds on priority, guys, um, is $23.15. And that's before our discount that some of us get, you know, because of being top rated sellers. So, you can see that it's not that far apart. Uh, in, a, in a five pound situation, you know, from the 2282 to priority, which is 2315. So, in actuality, you're almost better off going priority um, because you've got your coverage on your insurance and it's, you know, a quicker service besides. So, that's at, on a five pound situation. Let's see if we've got any questions going here. Well, yeah. Gray Station said the box sizes are inside measurements. Make sure you measure the outside dimensions as it may go over. Okay. Make sure, yeah. you, make sure you're actually measuring your box. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's right. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, now I'm going to jump from a five-pound situation to a 10-pound situation. Our box size is 15 by 12 by 12. Okay, guys? Um, the Smart Post original price of a 10-pound package would be $22.82. Okay? So let's take the uh, figures of 15 times 12. It comes to 180. And then the 180 times the last 12 comes to 2,160. Divided by the 139 comes up to 15.5 pounds. So you have to round up to 16 pounds, which would now cost me $30.70. Now, it's not that awful. You know, from 2282 to 3070 is not awful. So, you know, I'm sure in some cases I'm probably still going to use FedEx Smart. But... If you want to do priority at 10 pounds, just to show you the difference there, 10 pounds priority is $38.60. So, you know, your, your um, FedEx Smart at 3070 still is going to be a little bit cheaper than the priority in that case, depending on the size of the box. I mean, the variables are, of course, humongous. But, you know, if you stick with the formula and you're just going to have to take time to do the figuring, you know, uh, on on the uh, dimensional weight, so you know that you can see which is going to be the best for you. Now, of course, in, we've talked about this in in a lot of cases uh, when I was shipping FedEx Smart. If the package is going to my neighboring states that are close to me, priority was always better and cheaper than FedEx Smart Post. So you want to remember that that you know you you'll, you definitely want to you know follow up and go with priority. Uh, I'm, I think in some cases when I get into my heavier packages, I think I'm going to still have to be going FedEx smart. I just think priority is going to be totally out of the question. So, but you just have to play with it, everyone. You know, we're just going to have to uh, keep on doing it unless eBay comes up with that thing that they were talking about last year, Chase, at eBay Open. And maybe, you know, maybe we'll still get uh, some good news on that. So... Um. They want to know, uh, uh, Peg's priority amount, is that before discount? Yes. Yes, it is, everyone. So, you know, so we still, you know, we'll get our nice discount. So in the long run, priority is probably going to be our best bet. But it's not cheap. I mean, I've got I've got a sewing machine here that, you know, weighs about 30 pounds. So I don't know. I might have to switch that to just general pickup only, you know, because of, of, the, uh, of the cost. But, you know, some, once in a while, people will, you know, text me and say, you know, uh, will you ship it? So, you know, I have gone ahead and figured the way because it's so heavy, but, you know, sometimes they want it. Just like when I shipped that package to Canada that weighed 80 pounds, you know. So it can happen. Let's see. All right. So, what else? Any, any questions? So we're talking about skis now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Okay. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Trying to check on the. 
Yeah, what about that. skis? Do you think you're able to do skis still or no? Well, yeah, I, I think there's a good possibility on, on the on the water skis because, um, you know, they're not that heavy, really. So I think it'll be really close, Jace. You know, you, you have to, I, I, I have to stuff to watch. I, oh, and I'm sorry. Back up on that, guys. We still have to stay within the, the parameters of the 130 inches total and 70 pounds. You know, that's still in effect. So, you know, we, you know, even though I have fudged on my water skis. Oh, wow. Are you fudging? Oops, oops. Yeah, a little bit. But, but you know what? They've never been returned or anything. So, you know, I don't know if, if they ever checked it that close. So far. So, yeah, so far. Right. Right. I've shipped a forty-five dollar item and they paid eighty for shipping, says Ginny. So yeah, I mean, you know, if people want our items bad enough, we all know they will pay for the shipping. I mean, if they can't find it anywhere else, they will pay for it. I mean, I've I've found that out time and time again. Oh yeah, Kim Kim's talking to a customer in uh England right now of uh, for an item that's really heavy and mm -hmm. has a high shipping rate on it, but they're in discussion to get it over there because they really want it. So yeah. I you mean, know, that's when you want good. something, you want something. All right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if there's any other questions that we've missed here from everybody. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't been reading everything. All I see is fudge tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I'm laughs> what, 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 what discussion did I miss? That fudge <laughs> tastes good. All right, Angela Ritchie says, "How oversized, lightweight items?" Well, the water skis don't weigh all that much. Um, I don't know if I would call them a lightweight, but you know they're not as heavy as some of the other items that we have sold. I mean, I'm I'm guessing maybe maybe they're no more than maybe ten pounds. I think Jason, by the time we have you know completely wrapped them up, don't forget we don't use boxes on our water skis. We just use the shrink wrap, so you know that saves on weight considerably. So that might help. Let's see here. Let's see what else we got. Uh, okay. fudge on, oh, fudge on dimension. Okay. I, I thought, I thought we went to a discussion. I love fudge. I thought we went to a discussion of like, I know. You know I've really watched many things when I do the show and I'm like, fudge, who's got fudge? I'm like, you know, a kid, a fat kid with ADD. I'm like, there's fudge somewhere. I know. I wish, I mean, I wish we had better news for everybody. This is kind of a downer show today only because, you know, uh, it, it's going to hurt mom and dad a lot because we, you all know how many large items I find. So, Apparently, when I go sourcing from now on, I'm have to go back to clothes <laughs> and ship something sim simpler and easier. No, I, I probably won't. I mean, if it's worth the money and I know it'll sell, you know, big, then yes, definitely, I would still still purchase my large items. But it, it is kind of, you know, putting a little damper on things. That's for sure. Uh, any other uh, questions? You know, you definitely on your bigger. Uh, otter shaped things you definitely want to, you know what i do a lot of times is just put standard shipping standard shipping is just a generic term and then you can kind of decide and if it's in within a zone or two from you then you can pop it up to priority it'll be okay now the one thing i'm kind of bummed at ebay about is uh last year for those you went to open you'll remember this they told us that one of the things coming down the pike and i thought it'd be a lot sooner than now because it still ain't here is we're going to have a way to create shipping options for zones. So I live in Vegas, and then right to the left of me is Southern California, LA, San Diego. Right to the right of me is Phoenix. So that's one of my zones. And so things ship between this this area really cheap because it's in my zone. And so I could have the way they're going to do it, and they haven't done it yet. I could have a setup specifically for that zone, and then obviously a whole different pricing structure for Maine. Yeah. So this would help us. If it was done, and, and and the way they talked last year, and I really expected to see it by now, but not yet. Maybe yeah. this year. Let's hope they roll it out. Wouldn't that be nice if that was the announcement at eBay Open? I mean, that everybody would be thrilled about that. I would think that's for sure. Any other questions, gang? Do we do we pretty much have it? We we'll all crying our beer together. Yeah, <laughs> there's a tear in my beer. <laughs> Oh, that's a bummer. But you know, it's just part of business. Every yeah. every year, postal rates, regulations, things change. Like yeah, was, uh, one of the things that caught people off guard because they weren't up on their state's laws was you get a ten ninety nine from PayPal if you do twenty thousand in sales or two hundred uh, transactions. And mm -hmm. some people were falling short of that. Yet they were getting the ten ninety nine. It was because the your state actually changed their limits. 
And most people in that state somehow missed that. And so they, uh, they were caught off guard when they, when they got their 1099s this year. Right. You know, I mean, it's just, we just have to go with the flow guys. You know, we, everybody hates change. We know that. <laughs> and especially us old people, I hate change because I, when you get set in your ways, you just want to keep doing it the way I've been doing it. But you know, we just have to adjust and uh, do the best we can. Oh, cool. all right. Any other questions? Uh, wh what is the dates of eBay open? They are July 24 to 27. I think I yeah. saw. Yep. And I, I'll tell you this, you know, I've been uh, getting a lot of, uh, interest uh we had our ohio meetup group uh meeting on saturday and uh, we've got some new people that want to attend and they're very interested and so we we're going over the dates with them so i would highly recommend everyone that when ebay does post it and the registration that you register right away because this one could sell out really fast this year uh, i have a feeling you know with all the members that we have uh, alone we could we could wipe it out you know jay oh yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, when you see the registration come along, everybody, I mean, get, get registered. I know Annette, who is going to be your guest coming up this week. She's already got she's already got her, her airfare. She's already booked her flight. Again, it's like you're reading my mind. So let's talk about this week's thrifty business. So do a little housekeeping here. And we don't plan this anybody, everybody. No. no. <laughs> so uh, Annette's our good friend. And uh, Annette's going to be talking about uh, perseverance this week and uh overcoming uh you know really uh crushing blows to your your life and your being and 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 sticking with it and um what is going to be unique about this episode is i have my first male co-host who happens to be in the chat right now craig dawson from uh, our friendly neighborhood uh neighbor to the north uh, Craig's going to be my uh, first male co-host. Oh, no, second. I think Dave was me. Be my first Canadian male co-host. That's for dang sure. And uh, so we're going to be talking about Canada. Craig has a great Facebook group. If you are Canadian, you're going to want to join this group. It is called Canadian Resellers and Fantastic Thrifters, or Craft for short. Uh, and we're going to be talking to Craig about that. And we're talking to Annette about, uh, about a variety of things. And uh, Annette has her own thrifty encounter with me. The first day that her and her husband uh, met me, it's kind of funny. It is. And so uh, some of you know the story, but we haven't told it in a long time. So definitely uh, come on uh, over on Thursday night, 9 p.m. on the East Coast, 6 p.m. on the West Coast. We got a question, Jason, from yeah. uh, Deborah Mattel. She says, you have to disclose how you are shipping when you list. How can you change the shipping after you sell the item? You can only change it if you're going up, not down. So if I'm going to list something at FedEx Smart, but decide I want to ship it priority, that's okay. If I have it listed priority, I cannot come down to FedEx Smart. So, you know, you just have to decide which way you're going to list it uh, that is feasible for you. But you just can't, you know, you can you can never go down. You can always go up, but you can't go down. And I think the cost last year, and I'm sure someone will correct me real quick uh, if I'm wrong. Was it two fifty for eBay Open? Yeah, it was two two and a quarter somewhere in there. I don't I think, think it was, it was like, no, I, think, yeah, I, I no, thought it was 250 this year. Maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah. It's around there between two and 250. I would, I, I would yeah, say yeah, 10 times more worth your money. So, you know, the, the yeah, party, the party, the party they, they throw on Thursday night alone is worth it. Uh, and I'll, I'll be, um, I'll be having my thrifts class on steroids again on that Monday. So if you're planning your flights, make sure you come in. Uh, I'll, I'll be me and five other instructors will be we did we had 50 people in the class last year we might that's be able great. to do a few more this year oh it was 250 thank you Corey. uh oh, so make sure that uh if you're planning your flights now which i recommend it make sure to be in sunday night and we start sunday night with an ass juice party so yep um question was do most of the people stay at the mgm a good majority do but some are other other places i know that julie and chris brown from our group uh stayed at the westgate uh, which was like only $67 a night. And they uh, paid the 10 bucks to ride the monorail all week. The monorail goes from their hotel directly to MGM. I mean, so, you know, you know, you just get on and when you get to the MGM, you get off. So, you know, if you want to save some money and stay at a cheaper place and the Westgate looks beautiful, Jason, it looked awfully pretty. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there are cheaper ones, you guys just make it, you know, easily accessible. Like I say, the monorail is a, is a plus. Absolutely. 
All right, let's get right uh, to it. I, I teased this earlier. Uh, time for Mama's Boy segment. This one should make y'all go, uh-huh, how cute. And maybe a little sad. Uh, for those who don't know the story, when I was born, I didn't have any hips. And oh. uh, so when I should have been crawling, I wasn't crawling. Mom and Dad took me to the hospital, uh, to the doctor. They x-rayed me. They saw my hips were forming. But being a gooey baby, the ball and socket wasn't forming together. So in order to form it together, they had to put me in a brace. And so I dug out a really uh, funny picture of me in the brace. Unfortunately, there's uh, old-timey damage to the picture, but it's still, uh, you, you'll get the flavor. So here we go. Let me see it. Oh, geez, Jason, look at that, honey. Oh my gosh. So there I am in some kit, my grand, I'm guessing my grandmother's sunglasses. Yep, that and, is, those uh, are, yep. Yeah, that that was, uh, he had to wear the brace for, uh, he wore, he wore a, a cast for eight weeks. Uh, and, uh, down both legs, you guys. It was pretty awful. My first child, and I'm going through that and feeling so bad for you, Jason, because you know the, you had to keep the little part open where you went to the bathroom. I couldn't put a, a diaper on you hardly, and you got a rash so bad. And oh, it was it was a tough time. And then uh, you went from there into the uh, the brace that you see in the picture, and uh, for the next 12 months. But you were such a good baby. I mean, you never uttered a peep. And Jason never crawled because of the, of wearing the brace. He had to keep his legs up in that position, so he never did crawl. And he did. You finally got to the point, Jason, where you could roll over with it. That took you a long time. But, uh, <laughs> it was like a turtle watch, on his back. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, exactly, honey. We would watch you, and you, you'd get there, no, and then you come back down. <laughs> but luckily, and and you know, your sister had it slightly, not as bad as you, but uh, but she had it a little bit too. So I don't know what that was all about. But and everyone uh, loves the couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we're talking 1970, everybody. <laughs> I, think, I think I'll definitely pop that up on uh, on Facebook later, because even yeah. even uh, even with a little uh, damage, it's still a kick ass picture. Right. All right. Oh, that's a good one, honey. I like it. <laughs> oh, golly. All right. Let's get to your scores. OK. All right. OK. Um, we've talked about Hadley before. Uh, these are some uh, plates and dishes that I paid eight dollars for you guys, but I took an offer of forty bucks. Um, they were very heavy, and luckily they fit in a medium flat rate box, so uh, I actually came out okay on that. I got a little concerned because uh, it was originally FedEx Smart, you know, but I was able to put them in a priority FedEx uh, medium flat rate box, so I made out okay. So eight dollars to the forty was was good. Nice, nice, nice picture, Dad. Good job. Oh, yeah, I'll tell Dad. Uh, you know, I, I've had some Vera Bradley purses that I hadn't listed. I all of a sudden came across them and threw a couple of them up, and this one sold right away. I, I took, because I knew they weren't big sellers, so I took a, the offer of 16, but I only paid a buck for it. So, you know, Mom, Mom likes that. You know how I am. If I can make the money, I'll do it. Now, uh, we had uh, a lot of discussion on hats at our meeting last Saturday, and uh, it must have been that because ching, this is a Hard Rock Cafe hat from Maui because it has Maui on the back. See now, Jason, we should have turned sideways on that picture, shouldn't we have? Just, just angled a little bit. A little bit, yeah. So I was telling Dad, um, but I only paid twenty five cents. Oh, hey, twenty five cents for Mom, <laughs> and sold it for the twelve. Well, twelve oh one because he didn't want to, you know, he wanted to make it even. But uh, yeah, I'll you know from now on we're gonna do more of an angle on our pictures. Uh, I'm going to be uh, through this uh, haul, you guys. I'm going to show you a lot of carolers. I'm, what are we, February, what, 10, 11 today? And I'm still selling carolers like crazy. And as Jason will show you, this particular one is the Kindle that I've talked about before. And that all came as one little package, uh, everybody. And I sold him, I took the offer of 25 bucks um, and, you know, was happy with that. I, I, I always kind of know where mom needs to be, you know, on, on the offers that I do accept. I always, price them a little bit higher because I know I'm going to get the offer. So, you know, I adjust for that. Okay. And I'm sticking with the buyers. This was the set of the uh, gingerbread uh, woman and the two kids with the gingerbread stand. And uh, I did have it listed at the 110 and I got an offer of 95 and I was thrilled uh, with that. And so off those went. And, and I'm the reason I'm not giving you what I paid for these, you guys, these are the ones that I'm showing you today are from my personal collection. So, you know, uh, I, I, I don't have a price to give you as what I, I did pay for them. Uh, this here happens to be the little baby in the basket from 1993. And again, another Kindle. And I was offered 22 bucks. And I thought that that was definitely a nice offer from a $25 listing fee, you know? 
That baby's got to be so tiny. Yeah, it is, Jason. It's, it's quite <laughs> small and, uh, you know, just old. Um, I'm going to be showing you some more in my hall, but Dad and I went to an estate sale and uh, bought books. Dad Dad wanted me to sell this right away. I wanted to counter, but Dad didn't. Uh, you know, he said, oh, no, sell it, sell it, sell it. Because this was his kind of his little niche. and uh, But we only paid under 25 cents, Jason. Uh, and I'll get more, talk about that more when we get to the hall. So, but I, I think we should have countered. Don't yeah, you? I saw that price. I was like, man, that seems a little low. That's just exactly what mom thought too. Um, yeah, Nick and Nora pajamas. I'm, I'm still selling them, you guys. Uh, I just happened to pick this one out to show you. Uh, this is a small, so small still sell. Don't think that they don't. But it was a nice $20 offer. And uh, let's see, on the Nick and Nora's, I paid uh, two bucks for those. So on the $20 that I sold them for. Okay. And, and we, we discussed this one together. I know. Um, you know, I've been selling my scarves that I bought at this garage sale. Uh, I bought a bunch of, of coach scarves. And um, I think I've got another one coming up, Jason, down the, down the line. Yes, you do. And, yeah. And, and these all went to the same girl. And I've been getting between $30 and $35 per scarf. But these two were not in as good condition um, as the other ones were. And the girl who bought the blue scarf, that, you know, she was interested in the pink one. So I gave her a deal. You know, I said, you know, if you want to do 27 for both of them, I will be glad to sell them to you. So one girl bought three scarves from me. So, you know, and the scarves were averaging between three and four dollars a piece when I did purchase those. So nice. I, I, I must be on a roll with scarves because I don't think I have it in the hall this time. But I just sold another scarf this morning. Uh, not not coach, but scarves. Scarves are selling well for mom right now. And I would tell dad, if you're taking pictures of pink and or red things, take away the red bottom. I know. I know. It's, it, it's tough, guys. <laughs> what can I say? And I, I know, and, and, and you, in the one picture, Jason, go, go back there one second, honey. Uh, hang on. Whoops. You can. Yep, I can go back. Okay. Um, he does have them on the uh, the white um, glove thingy. Yeah. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to use that as the first picture, but he didn't have them both on the thing. You know, so that's why I had to go to the one of them both laying on the on the tablecloth. But he should have put them on the brown lazy Susan instead of right on the red, because I like showing them off on that um, hand because they, they show up nice. And I should have bought more of those. Passed those up. That was a that was not good. The okay. To yeah, I you know I am still selling yarn. Thank you to Nadine. And uh, these are actually really tiny little. Uh, Games of yarn. Uh, in fact, Dad says, "Are you sure those all six in there?" But uh, you know, at that, I'm at that point on the yarn, you guys, that I paid fifty cents for all those six, and you know, sold them for twenty bucks. So, you know, I'm I'm happy with that. That's for sure. So, yarn's still selling. I I know Nadine probably is still selling is as well when it comes to the yarn. Oh, we got a thing in here. Hanky sell too. Ooh, I have to look out for Hanky. <laughs> haven't done that. Make sure they're washed though. So yeah, so here's the other the blue coat scarf. Yeah, the blue, the blue coat scarf. And I, I, the girl gave me an offer of the thirty one, and that's why I sold her the two pink ones, both for twenty seven. Because you know, I just just thought it was nice that she was wanted all three. So yeah, I I made out really well on all those coat scarves because, like I say, I, I think I paid around four bucks a piece for each of those, and I was selling uh, most of them between thirty and thirty five dollars. So that was a nice, real nice return. Uh, I think I bought six of them, and now they're all gone. So. That was nice. Heck yeah. Yeah. Can't hate that. And this, we just bought this at an, at an estate sale that was, was going to be part of my haul, but it sold so quick. I paid $1 for this, everyone. And I, I, it sold the same day, you know, within a matter of hours of listing. So maybe I was too low, but the research I did, that was that was right where the price was. And um, it's a, it was a Chardonnay wine bottle, uh, moon shape, and, you know, the label's still on it. And so for a dollar, for 20 bucks. Away it went very quickly, very quickly. You know, you, when you don't even get time to put things in the hall. <laughs> See, <laughs> this, this is another time that I would get rid of the red because it's making it look. Because I, I really know. think I think that's the color, and based on this, it's kind of making it purple. Yeah, yeah. It, it well, it's pretty dark. It was pretty dark though, Jason. But yeah, okay. it does. Yeah, give it a ten. But it was a very, very dark co cobalt blue. Okay. All right. And now we're, we're back to the Kindles, everybody. Uh, I sold all six of these. And as you'll, you'll notice, they each are holding something different. Some are holding the Christmas lights and a champagne bottle, I think. Or what else? We got ornaments, you know. So uh, I decided to group them together. 
got a nice offer of you can see the 71.99 i was asking 80 so you know only eight eight dollar difference and away they went and I, i'm like i said these have just sold within the last couple of weeks you guys so i highly recommend you continue to look for buyers carolers out there uh don't pay any more than ten dollars uh for a regular size caroler um the kindles you know a couple three four five dollars a piece at the most and uh, i'll be glad to help anybody you guys if you're at a flea market and you see some just private message me and i will be glad to help you with those uh as well hey i got a question for the chat actually you know, going back to this bottle so yeah. this bottle uh as you sold it has nothing in the top no cork no nothing uh, -huh. uh you know you can buy corks right uh you know at, at like michael's or you know joanne fabrics i would have me i would have found a cork to stick in it would anybody watching live would y'all have put a cork in it <laughs> or would you have sold it just as is <laughs> that's a good question let's see what the chat has to say meanwhile dave had a question he wants to know am i doing calculated buyer pay shipping on everything yes i do dave i i do not ship anything free I calculate it and uh, what I'm pretty sure it's going to be, and uh, that's how I do it on all my items. And as you can see, guys, it doesn't ha seem to hamper my sales. I mean, maybe they would, maybe I would sell more. I don't know, but I'm happy with with the amount of sales that we are doing. So you know, I'm a happy camper. Okay. I know some, you know, some people want to do free shipping, and I understand that. But like I said, like we said earlier, if your buyer wants the item, they will pay for the shipping. Um, this is, an, again, the buyers. Uh, this is the butler and the maid with the champagne. And you can see I got a really nice offer. I was asking the 130 They offered me 115 and took that as quickly as I could. <laughs> so that uh, was so a Sold as is, no cork, no cork, cork less. Oh, is cork less, less a word, <laughs> Craig? That's, I like it. <laughs> They're waiting. Ginny's waiting for me to tell you to put a cork in it. <laughs> so Joe's asking why it's showing two prices. So mom had a best offer of uh, had a buy it now price or best offer of one twenty nine ninety nine. She took mm -hmm. a best offer of one fifteen. So it sold for in this case one fifteen. Right. That's what those mean. Uh, the reason I wanted to show you, yeah. <laughs> because you know I've, I've talked about se selling uh, you know metal waste cans. I always seem to pick them up, and they've been selling pretty well for mom. The reason I took the lower offer on this. Guys, this can was not in good shape. Um, you know, I only paid, let's see, I got it here, Jace. I paid two bucks for the trash can. And uh, I got the offer of the 23. And I said, you know, Jason, if you can show some of those other pictures, it might show just how bad, especially the backside. The backside really was in tough condition. And oh, a lot. Backside. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of rust. Do I have it in there? Oh, see, oh no, yeah, yeah, you yeah. see the bottom? Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I said, oh, to get 23 bucks out of that for a $2 investment, I thought, you know, I'm going to sell that one, you know, so the so way it went. But they, they, I continue to sell my, my metal waste cans, everybody. I highly recommend, you know, you keep on the lookout for those because they do sell. I have a question for you. What do you mean by Kindle the buyer? Does that mean the little ones? Yes, Kindles are the small little ones. They're not even considered a caroler. You know, because there are caroler children and there's caroler adults. Kindles are just these smaller, like elf, elf, elf. I guess more, I was, yeah, they're the elves. So they're they're small. They're, they're only about mm, maybe six inches tall, maybe about that. Ding. Ding. <laughs> and? And hey, guess what? Oh. Mom sold TV trays. That's a shock. <laughs> Thank God I got those shipped before the prices changed. Um, and I think that might be my last batch of tv trays so i'm going to be very selective now but um uh this this my mom paid uh i paid five dollars for that set guys and sold it for full price asking of the 69. so um oh, yeah they did go out on the uh, fedex smart post we you know did again shrink wrap them um dad puts in a little bit of cardboard on the sharp corners you know just for protection and uh and away it went so yeah i mean i, I will still probably continue to buy the tv trays but I might be a little more selective now because of the, uh, you know, the price increase. They're going to have to knock my socks off on the, uh, on what's on them, you know. So there, so there's that. So, Ma, what's uh, tell me one thing that you have picked up recently that was outside of your comfort zone, like say a month ago or two months ago, that you have learned from the show. Well, uh, books for one thing. I'm not much of, I, you know, I've done some cookbooks, but I haven't done, I haven't delved into it deep. So I would say books. And uh, record albums, Jason, because mom doesn't do a whole lot, even though I love music uh, and I should I should be doing more from you, 
you know, so I did pick up some record albums that we'll talk about today. So that's probably stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit on, on things that I've learned. And hats. I'm going to do more on hats. That's I want to do more on hats. Uh, Julie Brown spoke at our meeting uh, last Saturday and talked about hats as well. And and what I picked up from Barb Colson uh, on, on books helped me. So, yeah, uh, you know, I've got to do it. Now, you know what I want to do, though, that I haven't done it that, that you've done? Mom would like to take her time and go to Savers and sit down there and go through those those men's uh, coats and suits and jackets. I have not done that. And that's something I, I should do. Awesome. And, and the reason I ask that question is because you got to keep your eye on the prize. And moms keep her eye on the prize by what I talked about at the beginning of the show. So she's got her niche. She's killing it in TV trades. They're killing it in uh, Yankee uh, buyers carolers. Yep. But she started, she wants to go look at suit coats and more music stuff. And so it, it, you've always got a big picture, always got to keep your eye on the prize and become a better thrifter and a better seller. So speaking of that, what did you find this week? Oh, I, I, I'm going to answer a question here from Erin Austin. She wants to know the safest way to ship the carolers, bubble wrap and box. Yes, I do bubble wrap them always. And we use a shoe box. Uh, they fit great in the shoe box uh, size, everybody. Sometimes we cut them down a little bit, um, but that's the way that those go out. And she said, let's see, how about lawnmower parts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, let's see. There was She must, she must have had another question because she said that was number two. Oh, okay. I may have missed it in the group, but is there a website that shows all buyer carolers parts that came with them? I have a huge collection I need to list but need to see. If they are complete, uh, I'll tell you. If you just go online, Aaron, and pull pull it up, you you probably will find yours and, and have to see you know what goes with it. Um, but if you have any questions, call me or you know send me pictures, honey. I'll be glad to help you. Um, right, you know so that's why I'm here. Before we see your haul, I see uh, Texas Gal Treasures has wandered in the chat. Hey, Margaret, how are you? Thanks for coming this week. One of the yeah. best shows I've ever had. So thank you, Margaret. Yeah, and Vera cool. says I've never bought a suit. Yeah, you know, Vera, I hadn't bought suits or sports coats either. But when I, I was doing Thrift Hunters, the TV show, I had a couple guys online who I didn't know just poking me going, he don't know shit about fine men's clothes. So I went and started learning. And I sell sports coats and I sell suits. And, you know, I'm not the biggest seller of the two of them, but I do hunt them down and I do find them all the time. And I've yeah. made some good money. I've sold a $300 sports coat. I never mm -hmm. would have looked at it if someone hadn't poked me. Right. <laughs> all right. What so you got, Mom? Okay. Um, speaking of Barbara Colson, uh, we, there's a stage tale that we went to about a week ago. Uh, we picked up a bunch of books. It was a whole bag for six. So, you know, it went just right, regular. Froze. It was a whole bag for oh, what? Six dollars. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. And I said, okay, how much can we stuff in there? And, and no one else had hit the books yet. They were all on the bookshelf. And so over I went and started digging through and I'm going to, so for as many as we stuffed in there, I've already sold two books. Uh, as many as we stuffed in there, they averaged to be less than 25 cents a book, okay? Just to give you an idea. Um, this is, and they're all, they were all old, Jason. I mean, they're in the 50s and 60s, a lot of these books. So they're, they were early. Um, this is a, a Treasure Island. You know, it doesn't have the covering. Oh, um, that, that it does yeah. have the covering. <laughs> uh, no. um, so uh, this is 1950. And I put this up for eleven ninety nine. Here's one you might be interested in, Jace. Does that name sound familiar? Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, this is 1950 as well. Uh, it didn't, I was surprised that it didn't bring as much money as I thought it might. So I've only listed this one for $9.99. Yeah, you know, that book must have sold well. I see it quite often. The good thing is yeah. you have a dust jacket with it. But right. yeah, that book must have sold so well back in the day. It must have because, uh, yeah, I, I, as mom did a research, I was disappointed because I thought, oh, I found a goodie, but not that great. Um, let's see. This Huckleberry Finn is 1955. Well, I've never seen that cover before. I like yeah. that. Yeah, so that's in nice shape. But, you know, price point wise, probably I'm going to list for around $9.99. You know, it's, it's not as good as mommy was hoping to, it, that it would be. So let me put that one down. Let me get myself back up here on the screen. Okay. Now, this one, I think we got a winner. This is Better Homes and Gardens Storybook, okay? Ooh, cool. Yeah, and this one, I am listing, I have it up for sale for $39, everybody. So I'll keep you posted. You know, I mean, not too often, Jason, that you see Little Black Sambo anymore, you know? No. Oh. You know, and it's got, you know, got the illustrations throughout. So, yeah, this one looks like a winner, everybody. Um, let's see. I found one of these, uh, the, the, uh, the, the big little books, the Roadrunner. 
Okay. And that one. Road runner. Yeah, actually, I'm only, I'm only going to list them for like five or six bucks, you know, but when they're less than 25 cents, how can you go wrong? This is a Holy Bible copy from 1952. Uh, it's it bound in black leather. And this one is going up for $15. Okay. And then I've got a couple of Dennis the Menaces, uh, you know, just paperbacks, but they're early. You know, they're early, early things. So I'm just throwing, the, throwing those books up for like eight bucks in that vicinity. I thought this one was going to bring more. It was the book of the junior high campfire girls. Oh, cool I, book. Yeah, I thought for sure it was going to be more. And let's see, where's my pricing on this one? Da, 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 da. Where are you, campfire girls? Oh, here it is. Five dollars. You know, I, I really thought, you know, being like with the Girl Scouts and that, that it would uh, it would be better, but it wasn't. Um, these are just a few different, uh, you know, pamphlet books. But, you know, some of these are. <laughs> Dalmatians I mean, as pets. I know. Like eight and ten bucks. Um, then I have a, an early Charlie Brown. Cool. Yeah. And then how about your 1970 tennis guide? <laughs> I know. I know. Isn't that cool? And then a couple of a couple of these. I remember when I remember you guys even had some of these, Jason, when you were kids. Mom, well, I, don't, I don't remember those at all. Remember those? Oh, on that. Um, and here you go. I, I think I'll have to send this to you. How to take care of a tocha. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Uh, like I say, everybody, all of these were under twenty five cents, and I'm 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 listing them for around eight to ten dollars. Some of them are only five or six. Then I put it. I group these all together. You know, different books on. You know, pond life, rocks and minerals. What do we got here? Plants, the Rocky Mountains. You know, they're more informational type books. So they're all like so, nature based. So you made you yeah, made a, you yeah, made a so grouping of them. I just put those all together, guys, and put those up for twenty bucks. Now, here's my winner. Let me find my notes on this one. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. This it never been used, Jason. Um. Let me see. Where, where, are, where are we? Come on, come on, come on. I have my information here. Da, 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 da. Okay, here it is. Okay, 1952 this is, everybody. Okay, and again, it's never been used, you know. A little stained, a little bit. But this little baby, I've got it for $39.99, everybody, from what I did on my research. So, you know, hopefully it will sell. The original price tag is still here with $0.69. Cents on that okay all right so we will jump from there at the same sale they were selling uh nobody had been in the um uh room where the albums were and so i started digging through and they had a lot of disney i was so hoping jason for an enchanted tiki room but it wasn't there and um so i'm going to kind of go through these i'll go from on the quicker side uh legend of sleepy howl and on this one let's see oh, i love that Heck yeah, yeah. You, want, you, you want that, Jason? No, no, I mean, but it's just awesome. I mean, the art is crazy. It's a good graphic, isn't it, honey? Yeah, this one here, I could probably get between 10 and 15 on. All right, hey, you're way out of sync. It's like a Godzilla movie. It's when you froze for a second. Okay, what do you, do you want know, me to do? Do you know how to refresh? Well, hit the little round circle up in the corner? Yeah, let's see if you refresh. I, I mean, I don't know if it'll fix it. You know, thanks, All YouTube, right. but yeah, let's All try right. it. So while mom's refreshing for a second, yeah, you know. YouTube's been wonky lately. They won't let me do the lower third anymore. My wife is usually an admin in the chat, and last show she wasn't. I think her okay. wrench is back. So How about now? Like YouTube keep coming and going. I don't know what the hell's going on. So Any thanks, better? YouTube. Any better, honey? Uh, we're going to find out here. So Okay. All right. Let me know. Any better? Any better? Yeah. So Ginny says records can go media mail, but yes, but most records in the proper LP mailer can go first class nowadays. They usually come in at about 15 ounces. So if you're packing them right, you can okay. send records first class. You don't got to send them media mail. Now, if they go over a pound, yes, use media mail, but uh, most records will be first class. Okay. Yeah. And I did buy some of those boxes finally. So mom has those for shipping purposes. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, this particular one is called Sparky's Magic Piano. Uh, 19... right, hey, I'm going to refresh. You keep talking. I'll be back. Okay. This is a 1961, everybody. And uh, this one I'm going to put up for uh, around 20 bucks. Okay. And 20,000 leaves under the sea. This one's going to go up for between 10 and 15. Oh, that's bitching. Yeah, I know. Uh, Jason, do you want that? Uh, I think I have one. So I'm going to look. Uh, if you don't, honey, I'll, I will put it aside and bring it when I come All out. Right. 
Okay. Uh, Woody Woodpecker. And let's see, Woody is <laughs> from the 1960s. And, uh, and by the way, all these records were in very nice condition. And uh, he's going to go up between 12 and 15 bucks. I know you have this in your uh, bathroom, don't you, Jay? If I'm not mistaken. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, Treasure Island. Uh, he's not worth as much. He's one of the lower ones. He's only around eight or ten dollars on his. You know, but I only paid. I'm sorry. Did I say I paid fifty cents for these guys? You know, but the more the more we grouped. This one I thought was going to bring more. If any of you remember the Littlest Outlaw, that was back in Mom's Zero, pretty much. And uh, but it's not worth that much. I was so disappointed. Um, well, yeah, uh, Dad figures are around six dollars. Nineteen sixty three on that one. I was two years out of high school, <laughs> in case you want to relate to that. Uh, three Little Pigs. Um, this one here, uh, around 12 to 15. <clears throat> the Sword and the Stone, 1963. Uh, I got this one up for 14 bucks. And this is, this is the winner, guys. Uh, 100, this 101 Dalmatians, 1961. And I've got this up for 30 bucks, everybody. Okay. So, a little out of my comfort zone because I did a lot more books of things I normally wouldn't pick up. But after watching Barb Colson, you know, that I thought, okay, we're going to do it. And like I said, I sold two books. I didn't, I showed you the one, but uh, I've also sold a couple other ones. So, I'll, I'll show those when we uh, get together next week. Okay, I'm going to run through um, a little bit of um, some Hawaiian shirts, guys. I, I started to hit my death piles. And I just wanted to show you guys a few different things. Um, just to be on the lookout. I know Jason covers our Hawaiian stuff, you know, quite a bit, but uh, I wanted to show you some of these. This is a Ray and Spooner of the uh, a Mustang. Muscle oh, car. yeah. Yeah. Isn't that a cool one, Jay? I like oh, that. That's very like cool, that. yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is one of the earlier labels, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it, Jason? Yep. Yeah. Let's see it's not super early, but it's not, it's not current. Yeah. 1990. Uh, 1990s. Yeah, I did. I did look up the labels. Don't forget, everybody. You can go online and look up your labels. So a lot of them are there. Like I, I put up Ray and Spooner uh, labels, uh, vintage labels, and then those those come up. Uh, I wanted to show you oh. this one. This is a this is a, a vintage Hilo Hattie, and this happens to be a 4X. And I want to tell you, Jason, that's a pretty big 4X. You know, you know how the vintage ones aren't as as um, as big usually, but there's the older label. And this, I think that that one's from the '80s, isn't it, Jace? Uh, let me see it again. Yeah, let me the black and white one. Yes, yes, yes. '80s for sure. And this now, Jason, this is crazy. This is brand new from the 1980s. The Hilo what? hat. <laughs> it's never been washed, honey, or worn. I mean, it is in gorgeous condition. So I'm thinking on this. I don't know, Jason, because it's never been worn. I mean, I know it's it, it it's not doesn't have any tag on it, honey, but. What do you think? Oh, by the way, well, I mean, I mean uh, you know, unfortunately, it's not the most exciting print. I know, but man, I know. New, new old stock is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's a beauty. I mean, it's in great shape. Yeah, I mean, I would think you could at least get fifty bucks for it, being you know, new old stock. All right, that's what I, that's what that was the vicinity mom was you know shooting for. And by the way, you guys, I paid you three and three fifty on these, and the muscle the muscle one I paid two bucks. Jason, is there a name for this pattern? I keep forgetting. Wasn't there something to this? Uh, the Matson line used that a lot. Remember, on their menu. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know of a specific name to it. It's a cool shirt, but yeah. uh, you know, and it's not. Yeah. A, a, the label is Powhanna. Yeah, that's kind of like a step above uh, Cook Street, and Cook Street's the lowest level. I, uh, I bought it because of the uh, insurance. Yeah, I bought it because of the graphic. I just thought it was so pretty. You know, and that was a three fifty shirt. Okay. And this one I bought because it's so different. Is this is a Tory Richard Jay? And the material, I don't know if you guys texture. can. Yeah, it's a textured, yep. and they call it cotton. What the heck was it? Oh my gosh. Wait a minute. Cotton something. I can find it. Cotton pucker. Cotton pucker. That's what it was hmm, called. I never heard that term. Yeah, I mean, it's. Is that the right on the label? Cotton pucker? And, yeah, there's a tiny label inside, you know, huh. that's. Cotton pucker, yeah. I learned something new about Hawaiian shirts today. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, here, here it is. Um, it says 100% cotton pucker lawn, L-A-W-N. Cotton pucker lawn. All right. I know. Cool. I know. So I something new for mom. And that's why I bought it, just because of the different material. Oh, yeah. 
You know, I thought that was kind of cool. I like it. Good. All right. Oh, I got a brand new pair of uh, Levi 501s with tags and all that, you know. Now, look, it's, it's a button front, Jason. Do those sell as well? Well, that's what a 501 is, Ma. Oh, I, oh, is it, is that strictly a button? I, I yes. <laughs> well, Ma doesn't know that much. I don't do that much in jeans. So yeah, that's what know. 501s are, button front. <laughs> well, what the heck does Mom know? Hey, uh, Vera wants to know where you found the Hawaiian shirts. All over. All over, guys. I mean, they're there, there everywhere. Yeah, yes. some are from Sabres, some are from garage sales, some are from flea markets. So yeah, so quite quite a mixture on, on those. Okay, and then I got this cool Pendleton sweater with a golf scene. Let's see the uh, nice. Let's see the tag. Mm -hmm. And for, I, I paid three seventy five for this, guys. There is the tag. So mom just paused and went to high def. I wonder if we're back in sync now. What do you think? Are I don't we? know. We'll, we'll let everyone tell us. But yeah, I saw yeah. a quick pause. I, I saw the HD pop back up. I'm like, we're uh, back in sync. All right. What the heck's going on, huh, tonight? Now, is that an older label, Jason? Do you know? I, this one I haven't I haven't pulled up yet. So I'm not too sure uh, on that. You know, I don't know the exact uh, dates. I mean, someone in the chat might know. So yeah. um uh, uh, but I would have picked that up too. That's great. That's a great, great. Yeah, I, I just thought this was a, a, a pretty cool thing. And then I'm going to end on a, a note here that uh, this is something that I'm actually selling for someone, but I really thought you guys might like to see this. Back when the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame opened up here in Cleveland, uh, they were selling these pin collections. And on these pins, guys, like it, these are the 1986 inductees on this particular one. And then they've got listed, you know, all of the inductees who were on there at the time in 1986. And it's, we've got, you know, Ray Charles, Little Richard, James, uh, Jim, James Brown, um, you know, all the ones from mom's era, pretty much. Fats Domino, um, Jerry Lee Lewis, you know, who I think I'm going to be seeing this year. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so th this is, you, you can see, it's it's stood, look at the here, Jesus, it's got all these barcodes, too. Um, it's it's just a cardboard thing, and it does stand up, and you can see how the pins, you know, were, were yep. matching. Um, it's, it's, it was a pretty cool piece, um, and I did look this up. There's one for sale right now that the uh, fella is asking $250, uh, $249.99, $249 I think. So I put mine up for $199.99 for this girl, so... Uh, you know, so I, I make money that way too, you guys. I don't know how many of you do that, but I also have sold things, you know, for some of my friends and uh, take a percentage and uh, and it makes some extra money. So, you know, that's easy enough to do. That's for sure. So that is that. And there we go. All right. So uh, I uh, next week, we can't do Sunday, right? Well, What's no, happening? we can't. Because I'll well, be we gone. Could. We could, because I leave, I leave a week from Monday. I'm on cruise but I'll, I'll be gone. So uh, next Saturday work for you? Uh, Saturday, Saturday. Oh, I'm going. No, honey, I don't think I don't think we can. Well, wait a minute. Wait. A minute. If we do it in the let's see, I'm going to the Luau at Tiki Underground. Oh, nice. Uh, next Saturday, and I have to be there by six. Um, if we did it earlier in the day, unless we did an afternoon thing on Saturday, I might be able to pull that off. Yeah, we can do that. So we, we get on our show, and so we don't have to go in our week with uh, doing a show. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's see. You you leave on Sunday. Yeah, but I leave early, like 7 a.m. Okay. Yeah, if we did something around uh, 3 or 4, I probably could, uh, I think I'm going to make, I could do that. All right, cool. Okay, all right. All right, so that'll be, uh, I, don't, I don't know our topic yet. Uh, and hey, if anyone's got a topic that you want to hear uh, from yeah. mom, uh, make sure to uh, pop it over to me or to mom or in the group. Uh, you know, we'll cover whatever. You know, usually we figure out oh. something that's happening kind of immediately and talk about that. But yeah. uh, if you guys got something that you're like, hey, we, we want to hear mom talk about this, we're more than happy to, Absolutely. Uh, to do that. So, yeah, uh, just know. what did you say, mom? I said, yeah, just let us know if there's topics out there that we haven't covered, and we'd be glad to. Cool. All right. Well, there we go. That was a fun, uh, quick hour, and that is it. Uh, have a good Sunday. Enjoy the Olympics, everybody. Oh, get yeah. Olympic related, get it up. It's Olympic fever just started, so get it listed. Always right. got to be aware of what's happening around you in pop culture. And right now it's the Olympics. So uh, have fun. Have a good weekend. Or, well, weekend's over. Have a good week. And yeah. uh, like I said, Thrift Hall will be coming up like Tuesday. Thrifty Business will be Saturday. And then Mom and I will be back. I mean, excuse me. Thrifty Business will be Thursday. Mom and I will be back on Saturday. So uh, if you've not 
subscribed to my channel, please pop down there and subscribe. If you haven't hit the like button yet, please do that too. And right. uh, we'll see you very soon. So for selling past your expiration date, being thrifty over 50, I'm Jay. I'm Peg and happy Valentine's Day. Happy Fat Tuesday. And thanks for watching everybody. And we're gone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.